Welcome to FDS MTG News for Friday, December 22nd, 2023. Brought to you with the immense help of the folks over on the Play EDH team. Be sure to check out their link in the description down below. Culling the Week has been announced as the promotional card that will come with copies of the MTG manga Destroy All Humanity, They Cannot Be Regenerated. And no, I did not just make that up, Magic does have a manga, please wait to finish watching this video before you scramble to go and find it. The interesting bit is that this will be the first time Culling the Week has been printed as a foil, which has me excited because I love this card and sold all mine off when I needed to pay for something, probably a surgery, I can't remember. Volume 14 of Destroy All Humanity will become available on December 26th. MTGO traders will be shutting down. It was announced on the MTGO Trader Twitter account that they will be shutting down and will be keeping their bots open to sell through their remaining inventory, but they will no longer be purchasing cards or stocking new sets going forward. Heath Newton, the owner of MTGO Traders and the brick and mortar store Cape Fear Games in Wilmington, North Carolina, posted that he would be continuing to run Cape Fear Games and he welcomes any who are nearby to stop by and say hello. The reaction from many big names in the magic space, from content creators to pro players, all seem to have the same sense sentiment. End of an era. Is this another bellwether at the eventual demise of Magic Online? I don't know, do you think I can see the future? I just bought a deck on Magic Online, so I hope they stick around long enough for me to get sick of playing it. That being said, we do wish the folks over at MTGO Traders good luck in their future endeavors. Wizards posted an article on December 19th called Generative Artificial Intelligence Tools and Magic, and the community collectively tensed up their nethers, preparing for the worst. Thankfully, the article says the opposite of what you would expect, considering they just offloaded a bunch of staff last week. The article, paragraph really, is so short I can quote it right here. For 30 years, Magic the Gathering has been built on innovation, ingenuity, and hard work of talented people who sculpt a beautiful, creative game. That isn't changing. Our internal guidelines remain the same with regard to artificial intelligence tools. We require artists, writers, and creatives contributing to the Magic TCG to refrain from using AI generative tools to create final Magic products. We work with some of the most talented artists and creatives in the world, and we believe those people are what makes Magic great. What kicked this off was Wizards posted a job for a touch-up artist, and people on Twitter twitted and thought this meant they were looking for someone to touch up AI art, and rampant speculation ensued. Wizards felt the need to quell the speculation and let everyone know the job was to touch up human-created art. And let me tell you the phrase human created art is creepy and weird and I'm annoyed I have to make the distinction now. The National Labor Relations Board has found that eBay has been union busting. In an article from Vice, it stated that TCG player employees voted to form a union back in January. FDS MTG News reported on it back then as well. And almost immediately TCG player and eBay got all whiny about it. Allegedly they wouldn't bargain, would not communicate information they were obligated to communicate, forced employees to sign confidentiality agreements, and did other stupid stuff like remove chairs from workstations. Yeah, we're at this level now. Oh, you want fair wages in a working environment that doesn't suck? Okay, you have to stand now. It's also notable that eBay has recently updated its human rights policy to remove support of unions. Real subtle there, eBay. Like we're all gonna go, oh damn, I guess it's not in there anymore, so I guess they get off scot-free. Because it's not there. It was, but it's not. Guess I misremembered. While negotiations between eBay and the union have started, the representatives from the union have said they are receiving pushback from the company leadership. At this point, we will have to wait and see what happens. In the meantime, check out Card Kingdom. I can see your cards are a mess, your mini painting table is trashed, and your fly fishing vice is under a pile of crap. But I have good news. M-Tech Cave just released their hobby desk modules. They are mix and match, magnetized, and you can get an infinite amount of different configurations. Go to M-Tech Cave today and get yourself organized. Use the link below or the code FDS at checkout. Welcome to the corner. Here is where we talk about the fun and interesting corner cases that have been happening in Magic Rulings recently. For our first corner case, let's look at Amalia Benvide Sagira and Wild Growth Walker. Buckle up, this one is goofy. Amalia is a 2-2 legendary vampire scout for a white and a black that has ward pay 3 life. You can ignore that, that has nothing to do with this story. It also has the ability that whenever you gain life, Amalia explores. Then if Amalia's power is exactly 20, destroy
destroy all other creatures. Wild Growth Walker is a 1-3 elemental for one green and a colorless that reads, whenever a creature you control explores, put a plus one plus one counter on Wild Growth Walker and you gain three life. If you haven't caught it yet, that means that if you have both of these creatures on the battlefield under your control, once you find a way to gain life or have a creature explore, it triggers a loop where Amalia explores, which triggers Wild Growth Walker. In turn, you gain life, which again triggers Amalia, and it repeats until Amalia hits 20 power and all other creatures are destroyed, ending the loop, leaving you with a 2020 Amalia and no other creatures on the board. On its face, this situation seems fine. It's a loop that stops itself before anything gets out of hand. But what happens if Amalia doesn't hit exactly 20 power, and therefore the destroy all other creatures trigger never happens? Or what if you can give Wild Growth Walker indestructible? What happens then? Previous rulings would state that the combo would go infinite and the game would end in a draw. Here is where things get weird. It seems there has been a new ruling on this card. And real quick, with Explorer, you know how you can just keep the non-land card on top of your library? And that's how you can just keep allowing Amalia to get bigger without milling yourself out? Well, the new ruling states that once you start to go infinite, you have to start milling instead of leaving it on top. Effectively, you must choose to put the cards into your graveyard. Yes, the Explore triggers will still go on the stack, even after you've emptied your library. And technically the combo will continue to go infinite. Why did they rule this? Because in the official tournament rules, it states that the player who is running the infinite loop has an obligation to move the game state forward if they can. And in this case, with infinite explore triggers, putting the cards in their graveyard is moving the game state forward, and the game would end in a draw, unless they have fling. For our next corner case, we've got the Triumph of St. Catherine, an excellent card from the Warhammer 40k Commander decks. It's a 5-5 human warrior for one white and four colorless that has lifelink. Again, ignore that, has nothing to do with this corner case. It also says when Triumph of St. Catherine is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, exile it and the top six cards of your library in a face down pile. If you do, shuffle that pile and put it back on top of your library. I'm reading the fixed oracle text here. The issue here is with the gatherer ruling. Currently, it states on Gatherer that if you are trying to resolve the death trigger and you do not have enough cards in your library, then all the cards in Catherine are just exiled. They're gone. Fizzles. But that's wrong. You see, exiling Catherine and the six cards are a cost. So if you don't have six cards in your library, Triumph of St. Catherine stays in your graveyard and the Teensy Library stays where it is. No exiling for you. Thanks to the Play EDH crew for their help in putting this episode together. Be sure to join their Discord, link below. That about does it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and you all have a wonderful day. Welcome to FDSMTG News for... Welcome to FD... Welcome to FDSMTG News for... The other interesting bit is that this will be the first time Culling the Week has been reprinted... Here is where we talk about all the fun and weird cases that we have been talking about. No, we haven't been talking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm trying to go off script, that's my problem. If you haven't caught it yet, that means that if you have both of these creatures in um Yes, the explore triggers triggers? Yes, the explore triggers were s <laughs> my mouth is Yes, the explore triggers will still go on the stack. So in this scenario, if you were the creature, you wouldn't be the creature, you would be the player. My god. If you do, shuffle that pile and put it on the card itself says when Triumph of St. Traft St. Catherine. Why do I am I saying St. Traft? They announce that they will be shutting down and they will be keeping their bots open to self. That's what they're selling. They're selling. Let me try this again with breath. The reaction from many the reaction from many and people on Twitter tweeted and thought this meant they were looking for some to do.